Welcome back guys to a Classic Console Repairs special video. Okay, I kind of am going to fake you just a little bit here. Sorry about that. Um, so, some good news first before we dive into this guy. I bought a Jaguar uh, about two months ago on, on eBay. Got a fair deal on it for a Jaguar. It was non-working. And it had some pretty severe damage. Now, I've had to order some parts. And as anybody who's ever dealt with a Jaguar before knows, parts are difficult at best to get. Um, nevertheless, the main part that I was missing did show up today uh, in the mail. And I started recording that video. However, that video is going to take a long time to finish and when I say a long time it's probably going to take me the rest of the night uh, and probably a good half the day tomorrow to fix all the faults on that console and do a test on it um, but in the meantime I wanted to release some content to you guys kind of give you a little bit of a teaser uh, and we were figured we'd start off with a controller now the other controller this console did come with two uh, the other controller is still sitting over there uh, along with all the rest of the pieces to the Jaguar um, and we're going to go through that one uh, probably on the Jaguar video but uh, I wanted to I wanted to take this guy apart and clean him up and post this video this is going to be a quick video uh, not a whole lot to it I am not going to lie I did go ahead and pull apart the other controller I have not taken this one apart yet uh, this one has a small rattle Let's see if you guys can hear it a small little rattle to him probably just a piece of plastic broke off inside um, but I wanted to pull this guy apart and show you what was inside because I was quite honestly shocked stunned at what I found inside the other one so let's start taking this guy apart first and foremost how do you get this guy apart? So there are four little screw covers right here. They are sticky glued on. Something sharp and pry-y that's not too bendy-y is perfect. They're not stuck on too terribly strongly or at least maybe they were, maybe they were in 93 when they made this console um, originally. But over time, this one has, uh, has has definitely faded off. This console and the, the, the related controllers came from a Premier Video Store. Now, uh, and apparently it was not just Premier Video Store, it was Premier Video Store downtown. I don't know if you guys can see that uh, on the camera. Premier Video Store downtown. I Downtown where? I'd be interested in knowing. Not for any particular reason. Not that it would change anything. I'd just be curious to find out downtown where downtown Tennessee downtown Chicago downtown New York just just curious um, at any rate um, so one of the things that I constantly mock on my channel uh, is and 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 I don't want to get misconfused here because I do love Atari um, one of the things and I can't wait for the VCS to come out so I can get a hold of one of those or to be released to I'd have been paying attention, I'd have got a pre-order, but anyway, is Atari's build quality. And I am relentless in my belief that Atari failed because of their build quality, not because of the game quality or refusing to change with the times or any of the other reasons that Atari failed for. I am convinced Atari failed because of the build quality. And to prove my point, there you go. That is what is inside, if you ever wanted to know, a Atari Jaguar controller. Now, let's go few, through a few things while we're in here. First and foremost, to make note of, boy, that was really tight. Really tight. Okay. 
okay. <laughs> I can see why. Uh, I'll show you in a second. You'll get a kick out of it. It's hilarious. Um, first thing that you'll notice is the board. Now listen. This is just a fancy breadboard. Okay. Now they've got some traces on it. Nintendo was doing this type of thing in the 80s and improved. Okay. Atari is doing this type of thing in the mid 90s didn't approve uh, didn't did not improve uh, interestingly this is v 2.0 version 2.0 of this controller now when I went to take this apart uh, that one silver screw with a big head on it okay came through this hole and what did it rest on this little red pen this little red guy right here and I it generally uh, Sega put like a little metal ball bearing in the in the pad uh, in the carbon trace pad of the Game Gear and and people have tried different things Nintendo just all one pieced it with a nice little plastic nubbin um, that worked really well Atari though and I want you to look at this this entire board is just it's a breadboard that's all it is they just didn't punch any holes out of it except for what they had to. The solder quality on this is suspect at best. The component traces, all of this stuff, and, and this is my favorite. These are, well, I say my favorite. They just have some shipping tape wrapped around the wires here, and they've hot glued these legs in. That's how they did it. They, uh, Hyperkin. Okay, Retron, Retro Duo, uh, those guys, they do hot glue garbage like this. But Atari's not supposed to, but here it is. They hot glued these legs on. And when I say hot glue, I mean they're soldered. Don't get me wrong, they, they're soldered. So is Retro Duo, so is, so is Retron. They, they, their ribbon cables are hot glued on. Same, same, okay? They're soldered, but they hot glued them to hold them in place. You know, they used just regular old tape, just standard tape, uh, as a, as a as a to hold this bundle of wires together. You know, now the end of this is beautiful. You know, um, I'm not sure. It looks like it might be missing a pin or two. Um, might be, maybe, maybe one here, maybe, maybe not. Anyway, the end of this is molded beautifully. I mean, this is gorgeous. It's a nice thick cable. It's sturdy. Uh, you know, all of the things. They went through the trouble of making sure that the board was punched out to hold the pads on. To hold these, these carbon traces on. Instead of doing real fine line carbon pads, they actually have entire solder pads, copper trace, left open. Like, you don't get that today, you know. But the reason they did it was because it's cheaper and it's faster, okay. The pause and the option button, the reason it's like this right here is, is so that no matter where you hit the button, you are still crossing the bridge good enough, right. Same reason the ABC button, okay, these guys right here, ABC, are the way they are. So that if you accidentally hit up here, a little off center, wherever, you're actually hitting the trace, okay? As far as what is left with this uh, to look at, this is not, this is a 9405, not a 555 timer. Uh, 9405, other than that, it's just a bunch of resistors and a bunch of jumpers. So it looks like they had some expansions space on this board um, because all they did is just tie jumpers together everywhere you know just in a straight line uh, well I say that no they jump jumper from where's that going to yeah from, from here to here here to here here to here here to here here anyway you get the idea as far as quality I, this is just not a very good quality controller um, 
again, 1993, different time, different world. You know, can't be too mad at him for that. But when Nintendo was making the Super Nintendo, they were using better parts. These plastics, honestly, if I opened up a Retro Duo and saw these plastics, I wouldn't be surprised. If I opened up a, a Chinese clone of something and saw this level of plastic, this level of molding, I, I would I would honestly not be surprised. It's that bad. Um, you can see the mold lines inside of it. You can see that as clear as day. The texture on the other side, by the way, is, is a nice texture, but you can tell this plastic is just the cheapest. I mean, it's not necessarily thin. It's not flexible. It's just... Here's the best way to say it. General Motors in the 90s would have rejected this plastic. And that's really saying something. Um, they've got tons of internal bracing. Tons to keep this board where it goes. All these right here are what the board sets on. Uh, and this is where your D-pad rests on to make sure that you uh, uh, you got good purchase on it and the board and the controller isn't flex. It does have some wobble in it this way, but as far as in and out, it's good and solid. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just... The carbon pads on these guys are absolutely tiny. Um, but again, you're probably not going to be using these much anyway. I don't... I don't know why. who would. What was loose inside of it was this little piece of plastic right here. Um, I was trying to look and see where it came from, uh, where it broke off of. If I had to wager, I don't necessarily see anywhere for it to have come off of, uh, off the top of my head. But it definitely broke off of something. It broke off of right there. It broke off of right there. Yep. Right there. I don't know if you guys can see where, what, what I'm trying to show you here. Let me get a better hold on this. It broke off of right there. That's okay. You know what we're going to do? We got some Starbond CA. We're going to Starbond CA glue that guy back on. Is what we're going to do. Um, that just a second to set up so it doesn't smear all absolutely all over the place make sure that our piece is lined up to go in the exact direction and way that we want him on there cool all right well there's not a lot to do here so and it's not in terrible condition on the inside um, so really all I'm gonna do is brush them out brush out some of the dust it's it, it's pretty clean there wasn't really a whole lot going on in here uh, as far as dirt and debris and nastiness um, there's certainly not a lot on the controller that can fail other than just time and these brittle plastics uh, other than that, it should last a good long time, I'd say. Um, the only thing that I will say about this that I do notice is, these are going to always perpetually, forever and ever, amen, get dirt and debris inside of them. And the reason it's going to do that is because right here and I don't know that you guys can see it well on screen but you can see this little slot this little light colored spot right here there are four of those those are the slots where you would put your uh, instead instead of just having one through one through nine with your 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 asterisk zero and and pound button there at the bottom a telephone you can put a card over this that would give you well uh, uh, 12 more buttons 
right? Um, and so there's always holes right there so dirt and debris can get inside of it. Not a huge deal. I really honestly, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think you'll ever have a problem. Um, but it's something to look out for. Obviously, this thing has not been used all that much. I'm not even, I don't even have to, all I'm doing is dusting. I don't even have to go after this with a, with a, um, any isopropyl. Like there's, even on these buttons here, there's just, it's in great, clean shape. Um, listen, man, it's a Jaguar. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? They weren't used much uh, because there weren't a lot of good games for them to begin with. Um, sorry. I, and I've said it before, and I, and I do on the on the main video that I'm that I'm working on. When I was a kid, though, I wanted one of these something fierce. Uh, I wanted the next generation. I wanted one of these things so stinking bad. Uh, I could afford it. You know, my parents weren't going to buy it for me. And unlike my little brother, I certainly could not be bothered to save the money. And even if I could have saved the money, I don't really don't think it would have mattered. Uh, and, and I just say that because there was nowhere around me to get one. Here, oh, this is this is neat. So today, all of our control buttons are indexed. So A, B, and C over here, which are etched into the plastic, by the way, as part of the mold. A, B, and C will only fit one way because the buttons are actual different sizes. But this direction pad, you could put in that way and I know that you can't really let me see if I can hold these up and look and flip them over you could put this guy in that way uh, with the cross at a diagonal you could put that thing this guy in here the way it's supposed to go straight if you wanted to um, I mean you shouldn't but you could if you wanted to uh, because there's nothing there's nothing to index this part this piece into the into the correct position there's nothing to keep it there nothing to hold it in place um which kind of sucks i guess um uh, okay so on the main board itself though we are going to isopropyl and it, it doesn't need it it's pretty clean uh again this thing probably did not get used very much all we're going to do these are not these are copper traces uh, they will oxidize over time, and here's the reason that game manufacturers, game makers, game companies didn't like using copper traces. Here's why. Let me explain why. Because these copper traces, especially over time, uh, will oxidize, and when they do, you can push that little button all you want, and you'll get nothing. There's not anything wrong with the controller, or there's not anything wrong with it physically other than the copper is oxidized and the, the carbon trace that is on the pad no longer makes contact. Now what you can do, these are in good clean order, these are in good shape. If you ever run into that, what you can do is take some 3000 grit sandpaper and just gently rub and that will solve that problem for you. Uh, that will get rid of all the oxidation and get you back down to a good, uh, good layer that you can contact on. These are not very, these are so thin. I'm just, I honestly, I, you know, I, I wanted one of these as a child so bad, as a, as a young kid, I, I teenager, whatever I was at the time, 93, I think I was a, a teen. I must have been. Um, I say, I think, I'm trying to remember I, I, roughly how old I was at the time, and I don't remember off the top of my head how old I was. But at any rate, um, I wanted one of these so bad, and if you would have if you would have tried to tell me at that age that the build quality sucked, I don't think I would have believed you. If you would have tried to have told me that the build quality on an Atari game console on a Jaguar was this bad, I, there's no way you could not have convinced me. You couldn't have told you. I wouldn't have believed you. No way. Atari makes some of the best stuff in the world. There's no way. There's no way Nintendo makes something better. This is the Jaguar. This is the greatest console. This is it. There's nothing better. This is 64-bit at the time when everybody else at best was 16. I mean, yeah, you had, you know, you had a 32X coming, you know. 
yeah, they were, you know, Nintendo was eventually going to do something else, but, I mean, come on, you know, you talk all the smack that you wanted, but at the end of the day, you know, Jaguar, do the math, right? That was the slogan, that was the catchphrase, Jaguar, do the math, you know, now, I'm glad that, it was, that was a cool slogan, there has always been some debate, and I say debate, I don't participate in the debate, um, and, and I'll explain why, about whether the Jaguar was really 64-bit, or whether it was really 32-bit, and how they got away with claiming it, and all the rest of it. Was it 64-bit, or was it 128-bit? What was it that they were claiming? It was something, it was silly, whatever it was. It was, it was stupid. What they were claiming was just ridiculous. Um, but, yep, that's where that little red tab goes, and it sits outside there and gives the D-pad something to flex on. You don't actually have to take that out to... Uh, to, uh, to deal with the controller at all or to clean it or to service it in any way. At any rate, had you have told me back then that the build quality, there's you couldn't have convinced me. There's no way. There's no way the, the Jaguar is the best, you know. And, and it was. I mean, you know, it was, it was no Neo Geo, you know, but who could afford a Neo Geo? You know, we talked about it. And we talked about it. We didn't even know. We didn't know what a Neo Geo. We knew what a Neo Geo was because we read about it in E3, you know. Um, and we read about it as we were, you know, waiting for mom to finish shopping. We were at the grocery store. You know, we'd make our way over to the magazine rack because that's where we got all the latest, greatest gaming news. Uh, was the was the magazine rack at was Kroger or maybe um, I don't remember at the time what it was growing up, but, um, so I'm just getting this to, trying to get this to fit back down in here, and the play, in, or the start and pause button are being a pause and option, sorry, correction, pause and option button, being a little bit of a jerk to get in place properly, um, but there was no way, you would have never convinced me, do the math, man, you know, the Jaguar's the king, nothing's better than the Jaguar, you know, you might, you might, you might have a Sega. You might have this. You might have that. But it's not a Jaguar. You know, nothing can beat the Jaguar. Never mind that. What beat the Jaguar in the end was Atari. Atari beat itself. Atari beat its Jaguar. What beat the Jaguar was the Jaguar. Atari built it. They killed it. Um, this really could have been great. Um, what they did was they, uh, they they had two processors, right? Now, it, and if memory serves, yes, they, 64 bit because uh, each one was 32, uh, but it had a it had a 64 64 megabyte bus that that the system ran on. That's what it was. It's all coming back now. Um, so it had a 64 megabyte bus that. Uh, memory bandwidth bus that, that that Tom and Jerry, the two co-processors, could use together. And both of them being 32-bit, then since they could use the same bus, uh, they ended up being 64-bit, is, is what Atari claimed. Now, let me tell you a little secret if you don't know this. Um, the amazing thing was that while that was all true, the... The publishers, game publishers, found the Atari Jaguar extremely difficult to develop for. Uh, to try to use both of those processors, even though one of them, one of them was supposed to be, uh, Tom was supposed to do just the graphics, right? And Jerry was supposed to do just the audio. That was all Jerry was supposed to do. Um, and I say audio, that, that was really, it was a digital sound processor, is I believe what the chip was on the board labeled as, but, but, you could actually use both of them for video processing, if you wanted to. Now, here is where, here is where Atari screwed up. At the time, one of the most popular chips that anybody ever used 
was the Motorola 6800 chip. Uh, and they put a third processor in the Jaguar and they put in a Motorola 6800. And what Atari said, uh, Jack Terrell said, was all you should use this for is um, doing some light sound processing or managing a background or, you know, it's there, it's there just to handle the bus interface between the two. That's what, that's all it's there for. However, some very intelligent, some very intelligent programmers discovered you could bypass Tom and Jerry altogether. You didn't even have to use them. You could bypass them all together and just run the entire game on the 6800, which by the way, which by the way, worked really well, was super quick and easy to develop for, took almost no skill whatsoever, uh, was super fast, saved a ton of money, saved a fortune in development costs, and you could get pretty decent results. And everybody was super familiar with it, right? 6800 was a 6800. That's, everybody knows how to program for that. Um, I mean, I don't, but back in the day, everybody knew how to program for 6800. It's super easy, right? All the tools were already there. No special tools, no special dev kits, nothing like that. You didn't have to spend all the money because uh, it just had 6800. You just bypass Tom and Jerry, program everything for 6800. And the whole game would run. And so that's what that's what a lot of people did. That's why the game sucked so bad uh, for the Jaguar. Is because game developers just bypassed Tom and Jerry altogether. The duo. They just bypassed them and they just ran the 6800. You know, I just really... I don't know what to do. That's not going to stay. That's not going to stay. That's not going to stay. I mean, I can pick them back up with my fingers and that's not going to stay. Let's just give me one second here. Don't rush me. Just give me a second. Just give me a second. Um, let's see what I got. Let's see if I got something. How close is this? That's pretty close. You know what? Not only is it pretty close, I think it's actually the perfect size. And I think, I think that it looks better. My eye. I think it will last longer. And I'll tell you what else I think. I think it'll keep the controller from actually sitting on the, and rubbing and getting scratched up. So I think that's what we're gonna put on it. Those guys right there. Work perfectly. A little nubs, but sticking out. But that's no big. That's no huge deal breaker deal. So, a little bit of. Uh, I'm gonna save those and ship those away to whoever buys this, or maybe I'll keep it for my collection. I don't know. I like to keep the original stuff with them. Um, at any rate, so that's it. You know, that's that's what, why I believe Atari died off. Really, was because of their quality. And you can see it in this controller. It's it's just not the buttons. I mean, C feels very uh, clicky. B does not. B feels mushy. And A doesn't have... B's got a little bit more click to it. A doesn't have any of that click. And this just feels creaky. You can hear it. I mean, it's not bad overall. I, I remember seeing this and go, golly, it's so big. I mean, I think, I'm pretty sure that the Duke was probably bigger than this. But still, this thing is massive. Like, this is a really big controller. Interesting point of view before, uh, before I wrap this guy up. Atari, being slick, put the controller cord out the top where, you know, everybody would because your controller was always in front of you, right? Because you're staring at the TV. Sega put the, on the Dreamcast, they put the controller cord on the bottom and, and put a little loop up here to get it going that way. Why they did that, I don't know. 
never, never, never mind. Glossing over all of that. I'll go off on a tangent sometimes. I'm sorry. Um, that right there was a quick takedown and rebuild cleanup, just a light cleanup of an Atari Jaguar controller. Guys, if you like this video, hit that like button. Subscribe. I'd like to see you around for more of these. Um, come back. Watch more content, man. Hang out with me some. Leave a comment, questions, anything like that you've got. And uh, I promise, stay tuned. The Jaguar video... Jaguar video is coming, it's coming very soon. Um, not only is it coming very soon, I'm going to give you a sneak peek of the board. Maybe just one more. There you go. That's all you get. That's all you get. I'm not doing any more. That's it. That's all you get. Um, man, that 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 one's taking a lot of work. But thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys on the next one.